Well, Happy New Year. Uh, I, I am am very proud to give you a. Hold on a second. I, I need to just a little bit of this this red edition Red Bull, which I am not selling or profiting off of. It's just so good that I just. Uh, pardon my French. That was, oh my, as I said, um, well, it wouldn't be a happy new year podcast without happy new year noises. I mean, not everybody claps or kisses on the new year, but everybody burps because they drank something bubbly. So there, uh, No, no, I am so thrilled to announce to you that not only am I the formerly most important person in America and now de facto most important person in Asia as well, not only am I the unteachable one, not only the dear host, no great successor, I am the amazing one. Yes, I was called amazing this week. I've been called amazing many times, but just this week it stood out. So I'm now the amazing one. And it just goes to show that I am not a prideful or arrogant person. And you can too. Now, I want to get into something um, that I'm sure is very interesting to you. And that is uh, jerks. You You know those mean people? Well, um, don't worry about them. There. Now that's out of the way. Uh, but, but really, don't worry about them. Uh, I mean, they get too much attention, don't they? Well, I, you know, I remember one time I was, I was talking with, with my, my would-be rich dad, if, if I ever had one. Uh, he was an Amway Diamond. And I, yeah, I mean, you know, I was asking, I said, what do I do about, you know... Uh, church leaders not being happy with me. I mean, as if I was the only one who'd ever had that problem before. Hashtag Martin Luther. And and I, you know, you know, it's just Joan of Arc, Jan Hus. He's he said, well, Jesse, just act like it's not a problem. I mean, you know, really, how many problems do we have that come because we think that the problems are problems? I mean, if we don't think that problems are problems, they won't be problems. I mean, look, look at all the people that are all worked up about Trump being elected. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand what they're upset about. I, I made a video saying you shouldn't worry about Trump, but they've got themselves in a tizzy. It, it, it's, it's like a snowballing drama. They didn't get the reaction that they wanted, so they're going to cry more alligator tears. And they still didn't get the reaction they wanted, so they're going to wail and cry and roll around on the floor and cry their alligator tears. And they're just going to keep going and going, and, and they find, they got themselves into a crying fit where they're, <gasps> you know, they can't breathe, and it's just, and they're knocking things over, and they've gotten to themselves to a point where they really are sad. That's what, that's, I, I mean, how much, how much peace could we have if Obama had simply told his supporters, keep calm and carry on? Would they not believe him? I think they would. Which means that they don't need him to tell them. They can tell themselves that. I mean, if Obama were to tell his people, he'll tell his supporters, keep calm and carry on. Just stay calm. Now, that's leadership, telling people that it's okay, keep calm. There's a lot more involved in leadership, but I mean, it, it, takes a, it takes a leader to tell people, remain calm. You know, whatever happens, it's going to be better or less bad if we're just calm. Hysteria itself creates more damage. Maybe the answer will come at the last minute, but we'll only be able to see it if we're sober and not drunk on our own hysteria. And, and, but, but here's the thing. We've got a lot. I mean, it's easy for people who aren't going hysterical about Donald Trump to, to go hysterical about other things. 
So what what are the, 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 the excuses for hysteria in your own life? Not getting back to what I was saying before I interrupted myself. As if, I don't know, George, would, 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 do, I, if, do I need to practice ventriloquism? George, would I need a puppet to argue with to make it interesting? Or can I just argue with myself? I don't know. I, he says I've got a point. Um, I could just argue with you. But see, that would be real. Um, if, if, if Obama were to tell his people, keep calm, and they were to keep calm, that means that they could also tell themselves to keep calm and they would keep calm. But no one is saying that. He's not saying it. They're not telling themselves this. Even though this, the, 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 the poster from the crown during World War II, keep calm and carry on, even though that poster has been floating around, it's kind of resurfaced in popularity. Even with that, people still aren't telling themselves to keep calm and carry on. And it sort of tells you the state of things. Now, I, I'm going to explain more in great particular detail and tell you why I believe this is so important when I finally get to the point. But just being calm, it solves so much. I mean, there are so many times. I mean, have you ever had th those times where, where you thought maybe you offended one of your friends, but actually maybe the friend wasn't offended? But the friend seemed to be avoiding you, but actually the friend was busy working, doing something maybe to even help you. I mean, come on. We know that some of the best marriage proposals happen when it looks like the man is possibly rejecting her, or maybe he forgot, or the best birthday surprises are the birthdays that, you know, the person thinks that everyone forgot. I mean, how many things do we get all freaked out about when there really isn't a reason to. Those, those, those times, the little tiny thing, nobody else is watching. It's just you and the other person, or it's you in a situation, or it's you all by yourself reacting to something you, someone told you over the phone or you learned, or you're going to talk to the person in two hours, but you just found out when inside yourself in those quiet moments that aren't on camera, that's when you can practice one of the most important skills. Just ignore opposition. Don't worry about it. Seek to find ways that you can, you can brighten someone's day. If someone betrayed you, that person might look at you and, and act angry, but maybe that person really is hurting inside and they need you to just smile. Maybe they're being mean because they think that you're going to be mean to them and they're going to be mean to you first when really they really want friendship. So go, go buy the person a little chocolate kiss or, you know, a little, just something little. Don't, don't buy something with a lot of calories because the person, you know, might have watching their weight. But you, you know, get a token, buy soda water. You can't go wrong with party water. You can't go wrong with party water. And so speaking of party water, I'm just going to get to the point. One of the marked but rarely noted traits of highly successful quote unquote people is their ability to not hold a grudge. Recent examples are the election and the voters, the forgivers and the vindicators. Being offended, holding a grudge, claiming your right to object, standing up for principle or however you want to cloak it, clinging to the past anchors one's self in the past. Of all the success skills and self-improvement steps one could learn, moving ahead without staring behind is the most worthwhile. So, never fire someone without a recommendation letter and never argue with people not in the room. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.